Hi, how are you? We're so glad you're joining us. Uh, we're gonna just kind of chat for a second while people get on. And um, I'm Holly and this is Abigail. Hi everybody. And we're just super excited to be with you today. So it's been a good week here on the little homestead and oh yes yes our garden has so much fruit it's um getting bigger every day it's a jungle <laughs> snakes frogs grasshoppers whatever <laughs> you can think of pretty much <laughs> except monkeys and lions of course but you know all the animals that are down here um we got 70 pounds of cucumbers yes not the other day sometime this week and I carried a box of 45 pounds down. So I think I'm getting stronger. So That's the good. thing that happened is we planted Armenian cucumbers and I am not familiar with those. We didn't even know what they were supposed to look like, but they get huge overnight and the cucumber patch is so dense, you can't really even see them. So if you miss them for a couple days, they're just giant. Literally we had an eight pound giant cucumbers. I think we had a nine pound. But they do make fantastic pickles. We've made a lot of pickles. We've made sweet pickles, dill pickles, refrigerator pickles, cucumber salads. Um, I don't remember what all, but everything. It's, it's <laughs> been much. a great oh tzatziki, great cucumber salad and, and tzatziki. Uh, good, good, good. What's it called? I can't remember. I don't it starts know. with a G. It's like that veggie soup. It's got onions oh, and tomatoes. Oh, gazpacho. Gazpacho. Yes, that was delicious. You make gazpacho with just raw cucumbers and tomatoes, and it's very yummy. Uh, and we're also learning tons, like with letting the cucumbers get a little too big. Uh, those are still edible, but okra gets really big really fast, and then it's really not even edible. Uh -uh. Once it gets big and woody and bitter, we even tried blending it up in a shake because it um, can be really good in shakes, but it tasted really, really, really bad. bad. So <laughs> anyway, we're learning tons, and we're having a great time. And um, God has just super blessed us with a really fruitful garden this year in spite of our inexperience. So that's been awesome. Super great. So um, what else? Our chickens should be oh, laying yeah. soon. Our leghorns are probably going to lay like very soon. But we one, so. one, we got two chickens from Indiana. It's kind of surprising because it's more cold up there. Um, and so they're laying, and they're laying every single day. But our chicken that's been down here, and we've owned her for like two or three months, she is not laying at all, and she's grown up in Texas. So we're not sure what's up with that. She's, she's still a young hen, so it's not like she stopped laying. But right. She'll probably start laying once it cools down a little bit. But often chickens will take a break from laying in the heat, and uh, it's been pretty hot. About 100 Very degrees. <laughs> this week actually has yeah. been a little bit cooler and only gotten up to 93 or 94 each day, but it still is really hot and humid. Um, as I said before, we're learning so much and we had had our chickens. We had a little sad um, situation. We had had our baby chickens that hatched. I, I think we told you that they hatched uh, back in the beginning of June um, we had them in an incubator and that was amazing. Um, but some of those babies unfortunately got too hot. Overheated and died. They overheated and died. So we had to move where they were and um, just make sure they had plenty of shade and plenty of water. All but day. now those chickens are six weeks old. Whoa, they're growing fast. But uh, they're six weeks old, so now they're free ranging and they're out of the brooder. And so we don't really need to worry about that anymore. But we do have to fill up the chickens' water morning, afternoon, and evening. Yes, and make sure they always have shade. And thankfully, we have some trees. So um, we're super thankful for that. So uh, I think we're still working on a couple of things. Uh, but we do want to welcome all the members of the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners Group. We're so glad that you're here. And thank you to Gail for hosting us and answering questions and comments. And also Amy, we're uh, so thankful for you and your help. Um, we just appreciate all that you guys are doing for us and um, for welcoming us to the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners. 
So let's get started. Uh, we're uh, showing you how to cook spaghetti squash in the Instant Pot. I forgot to even say, um, <laughs> we have had a huge amount of spaghetti squash growing in oh, our yeah. garden. We're so excited because this is a, a vegetable that will hold for months and we can store it and hopefully have um, enough to last us all winter. But it is a, a squash that you can actually find in the grocery store pretty close to year round. I saw some just the other day in our local Walmart. And here's what spaghetti squash looks like. And it's really cool because um, when you, I don't know if you've ever had it, I didn't grow up eating it, but when you um, cook it and open up, as you'll see later, it pulls apart like spaghetti, as opposed to pumpkin or butternut squash, where it just comes apart and it's just all uh, uniform. These look like spaghetti noodles and taste very neutral. And so it's a fabulous um, low carb side dish. Um, and it also acts like spaghetti and um, it's fantastic. We mm -hmm. use it in casseroles. We'll show you some ideas later. But uh, I don't know if you've ever cooked a hard winter squash, but they are very difficult because they're so hard they're really hard to cut. And so I always, um, whenever I was, before the Instant Pot, in the pre-Instant Pot days, when I would roast it in the oven, you have to cut this in half and um, it just feels really dangerous, like you're gonna hurt yourself. So, um, and it certainly is not something I would have a kid do. So I'm so excited to be able to show you how to cook spaghetti squash in the Instant Pot because you don't have to mess with cutting it and you can cut it apart very easily after, after it cooks. It. Yep. So all you do is take your spaghetti squash and you put it in the Instant Pot. I have a large family and so we're gonna do two in the eight quart Instant Pot, but you can just do one and two won't usually fit in the six quart. And you do wanna put them on the trivet. My trivet kinda got all off kilter here. You do want to put them in the trivet, and then uh, in the eight quart, you want a cup and a half of water, and in the six quart, six, uh, just one cup will do, and then that's it. We're just going to close this up, close the lid. Uh, this is the Evo, so it automatically seals, and then we're going to press pressure cook, and we're going to make sure it's on high pressure. And the time, because it's blinking, I know it'll adjust the time, and we wanna cook the whole spaghetti squash for 20 minutes. And I'm gonna go ahead and press start. And that's gonna come up to pressure fairly quickly because we only have a small amount of water. And um, then that's gonna cook. And while that cooks, we're gonna show you one of the things we like to put on top of our spaghetti squash, and that is our Texas chili. And you can find that recipe on our website at thecookingfamily.com and either search for Texas chili and I think the recipe is cookingfamily.com slash Texas chili or something like that. It will post it, it'll be in the, in the comments. So uh, let's get started with that. Do you wanna show how to cut an onion? Sure. Okay. And Abigail is gonna use this um, great knife. And also my cut glove. And also her cut, cut glove. Um, we love having kids cooking in the kitchen and a safety measure that we like to take is to have the kids hold, use a cut glove and uh, make sure they use good knife skills. Um, so go ahead. Okay, so we're going to dice an onion today and what you want to do is you want to, there are two sides, this is the stem end and this is the root end. The root end ha usually has fuzzy things, and what I do with those is I uh, pinch them off or cut them off, depending on how long they are. And so uh, you want to make a flat surface for you to just turn this like this, so you'll cut that off was the stem end. The stem that you end, just yes. Cut, right? You cut off the stem end, and then you're going to just cut it right down the middle, and then you have a half of an onion, and so you're going to peel off this um, first layer that has the paper really hard to do it with just like just peeling off the paper so we peel off a piece of the uh, fruit also yeah just one layer because you want to get that papery layer of onion off and it is so much easier to peel 
after you cut it in half and cut off that stem end than it is before. And if it still looks gross, which this looks beautiful, but if it lo looks like unappealing, then you can just peel off another one. Yes. So uh, another layer. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, cut our onion in, what would you call it? Ang well, at an angle toward the middle. Yeah, like rays of the sun. And we're just going to do that all the way across. So notice that she's keeping the root end intact so that she has something um, to hold on to while she makes the dices. Yes, and when you're Frenching, you don't do that. Yeah, you we'll just, set that another yeah. time. And then you're just going to uh, go across your rays the other direction, like yeah, opposite the way you just cut them, and cut it down like that, and you have dices. So we're gonna do that with the other half, and then we will have our onion. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this Instant Pot on so we can get our meat browning. And I'm gonna put this on saute. This is one of my favorite features of the Instant Pot is that you can um, use the saute function one moment, I'm gonna press cancel. We're gonna just start it on saute and then I want to push saute again on this machine to cycle through and get it on real hot so it'll heat up all the way. Um, and we're gonna brown uh, some ground beef here. You can actually use any kind of ground meat that you want in chili. If you just want uh, ground turkey, ground chicken, uh, any of those will do. I'm looking for my little uh, wooden spurtle here. And we're going to go ahead and just start breaking up this meat while the Instant Pot starts heating. And then we can start sauteing the onions. Those are done now. As soon as Abigail's done. This is fairly lean ground beef. So uh, we're not going to bother draining, but if you have real fatty ground beef, then you'll want to drain the fat off before you saute your onions in there. Onions do burn your eyes, so <laughs> just be careful. Usually the kids, um, one of their, <laughs> so sometimes gum, chewing gum can help with the fumes of onions and keep it from burning your eyes. So um, most of the time when the kids are uh, cutting up an onion, uh, one the thing that incentivizes them to want to cut up the onion is that they get to the chew on a piece of gum. So that's kind of a special treat. Are you gonna cut the bell pepper? Uh, I'll cut the bell pepper. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna use my favorite knife, uh, which I got for Christmas. And it is called a Shoon knife. And um, I really recommend if you are uh, thinking about it, investing in learning how to cook or improving your cooking in the kitchen, that you'll just invest in a really good kitchen knife. Um, it is really priceless to have in the kitchen because it makes cooking so much easier. Uh, you know, sometimes you can get away with cheap tools um, or tools that aren't quite exactly right for the job, but with cooking, you really want a great sharp knife that will cut your food and it just makes cooking so much easier if you have a good knife. Okay, so uh, I didn't even remember to tell you, I was telling you about the knife. Um, it's super easy to break the core out of the bell pepper and, and uh, then just slice it up if you, if you cut it in half first. And then, yeah, just sli thin slices, right? Yeah, thin slices. Um, we also try to knock some of the seeds out into our trash bowl. But if you get a few sweet bell pepper seeds, it's not gonna be a problem. Uh, the jalapeno seeds, at your own risk. <laughs> I've had those before, they're bad. Yes. So, um, also in our garden, I got a really awesome blessing of um, finding a huge basket of plants at Walmart that they were about to throw away. I think I may have told you that back in the spring. And a whole bunch of them were bell peppers and they were labeled 
sweet bell peppers, but now that they've come up and they're bearing fruit, I've waited and waited for them to get big, and they're not. So I was tasting them in the garden. I just bit into one, and it turned out to be a jalapeno. So jalapenos, so. you don't want to put the seeds in uh, it, if you don't like it super spicy. Okay, so now that bell pepper is in here, we've got the bell pepper and onion and ground beef sauteing. And something that I love about teaching my kids to cook, and, that, that, and I hope that this encourages you, is at this point, the ingredients that we have here could go so many different ways. We're making chili with this, but you do the same thing up to this point to make spaghetti sauce. And so there's just a small variation between going the Mexican route or the Tex-Mex route to some Texas chili or going Italian and making it spaghetti, uh, spaghetti sauce. You could just go so many different ways, but if you know the basics and if you teach your kids the basics, then they're equipped to do so much more. Do you want me to chop up the garlic? Oh yeah, you can do the garlic. Okay, so we are going to use seven cloves of garlic. The yes. recipe says six to eight. So, just right in the middle there. Just right in the middle there. Um, move this. So uh, we use this meat mallet. It makes it a lot easier to peel because it's super hard to peel without it. It just breaks the skin loose from the garlic. It's and also fun, right? Yes, very <laughs> fun. And uh, it's still going to be a little sticky. Let's take this off. But not as sticky as just peeling from without crushing it first. Right. Okay, and then we'll throw that paper, paper in there. In there. Uh, and we love to use a chopper. Like um, the one we have here is the OXO chopper. And we also love the Pampered Chef Chopper for chopping garlic. And it is uh, something that kids can use and allows them to get into the kitchen. And you can help them use it if they're a little one. Um, and by little one, for using a chopper, probably maybe um, 6 to 10. And older than 10, they can handle it pretty much on the, their own. Uh, once you supervise them, make sure they've got it. But obviously, teenagers. She can handle it. Yeah. So then we're just gonna dice this with this mince. Mince the garlic. Okay. Awesome. So there we go. So I'm gonna let these bell peppers just get a tiny bit more done before you add the garlic. And meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and add the chili powder and cumin. Um don't shy away from using a good amount of spices. So in this recipe, we use a quarter cup each of chili powder and cumin. And this is a really mild chili powder. It just adds a lot of flavor. It doesn't add heat, or at least not much. Okay, and so there's a quarter cup of chili powder, and here is gonna be a quarter cup of cumin. Cumin is such a great warm flavor. A lot of chili powders will have cumin in it. There, I got a little, a little overboard. Uh, a lot of chili powders will have cumin in it, but if you'll add a little extra, it just adds a fantastic warmth to your chili. And obviously, it's July in Texas, and we eat chili all year round. Yes. Even if it's hot. Okay, and a little bit of oregano is another ingredient that we love to add to our chili. Uh, just one teaspoon of oregano. And it just adds a depth of flavor to chili that uh, is fantastic. And, and it's unique if you haven't tried that before. This came out of our garden last year, so it's a little bit stemmy. There we go. So we just picked the stems out, My right? spaghetti squash just came up to pressure okay, and started awesome. cooking. So. so the spaghetti squash is well on the way. I'll move this out of the way. Okay, I'm going to give this a stir, and then I think we can add the garlic. I'm going to go ahead and break up the ground beef a little bit more. I did add a half a teaspoon of salt 
to the veggies and the meat to just kind of season those. And you can see that that chili powder is getting all over the ground beef and seasoning that up really well. And go ahead with that garlic. Oh, yum. And the garlic always smells so good when you add it. You only want this to be in there for about a minute on its own to open before you go cans. ahead and add, yes. Which one do you want first? Go ahead and add the diced. Okay. Um, one of the things you want to make sure of when you're cooking in the Instant Pot and you brown it first is that you deglaze the bottom so that it doesn't give you the burn notice. Um, because if there's any brown on the bottom of your Instant Pot, it will, uh, as a safety feature, the Instant Pot will stop trying to come to pressure. It'll either give you an, a burn notice or just start counting down. You can go ahead and pour those tomatoes in. Uh, tomatoes, canned tomatoes are a great thing to deglaze the pot with. I don't have much browning on the bottom. Uh, tomatoes are really great for deglazing. They get that brown off really easy. Another thing is chicken broth or any cooking liquid. If you have wine that you're cooking with, it's another great thing to deglaze the pot with. Do you want me to open this? Yes, ma'am. So that was a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes and here's a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. And that will make a really good chili. And then Another ingredient we're using, these are pinto beans that we cooked last night in the Instant Pot. Um, it's just another fabulous thing to cook in your Instant Pot. If you haven't tried cooking dried beans um, in your Instant Pot, it is so, they're so good. You can season them up however you want and they don't have any added chemicals or anything in them. So we're going to use um, these. We did not can them. We just store them in jars. And they'll keep for about a week in your refrigerator uh, in these just in jars. And we're going to go ahead and add, this is going to be about four cups. A quart, yeah. There you go. Okay. And then Abigail's going to add these fresh tomatoes. Whoop. Sorry. It's a little splashy, those yeah. tomatoes are. Okay, and then we need to add, because this is so thick and so tomatoey, tomato, tomatoes are an ingredient that can uh, burn in your Instant Pot and scorch on the bottom. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of water. Yeah, go ahead, and she's gonna add it to the can um, and then swirl that around because there's just a little bit of uh, tomato, crushed tomatoes stuck in the bottom of that can. So. That's very thrifty of you, girl. Thank you. <laughs> you taught me well. <laughs> so just pour it in? Yeah, just pour those, that little watery, and I'm going to add just a tiny bit okay. more. There you go. And uh, we are being mindful that our, um, we're being mindful of our volume max. In yes. the Instant Pot, do you know? Uh, is it I'm putting quarters? you on the spot. Two thirds. Two th I knew it was like, I meant, I meant two thirds. That's, That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Um, it's the volume that you want to pressure cook at is two thirds of the maximum capacity. Wait, so we have an added on Worcestershire. Oh, you're so right. I almost forgot. Okay. Another thing we like to add for a little umami. I love it when the kids say, Ooh, Ooh mommy. <laughs> this tastes so good. It's like, oh, you're such a pleasure to cook with. Uh, these are the Hatrigo measuring spoons, and we are really enjoying using these. They're great stainless steel, heavy duty, and um, just great measuring spoons. So how much was the food? That was one say? tablespoon. Okay. And then I'm just going to put a little sprinkle of cayenne pepper. Not too much. Don't want any kids fussing about that. And then this is an optional ingredient, but because there's so many tomatoes in here, um, we're going to add just a little bit of brown sugar that's going to uh, kind of cut, cut the acidity the in the tomatoes so it doesn't give you the, a sour pucker. Okay, we're going to stir that in and close it up. Okie dokie. Okay, and so uh, just in anybody who does not like chili, 
Um, I encourage you to try this because my friend, she didn't really like chili that well. She uh, tried it and she didn't like it. And then she tried our chili and she loved it. That's and right. so if you don't like chili, just try this and see how you like it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and choose bean chili. That's the bean chili program. I'm gonna use the plus and minus buttons to adjust the time because everything in here is pre-cooked and we just want the flavors to come together. I'm just gonna cook this for about four minutes and I'm gonna wait and it should start on its own. There we go. Okay, uh, so we wanna ask you to go ahead and like this video and, and uh, that will help the Facebook algorithm share it with more people. Um, also, if you'll like us on Facebook and share this video with anybody that you think will benefit from watching it. We would love that. That would be really helpful to us. And um, also feel free to ask questions and make comments. We love it when, um, when you do that. And it, it's, uh, it's fun for us to come. I don't get to watch them as we're kind of going through right now, but um, we try to answer all the questions as we go. And if not, we'll answer them later. And so we love, we love to read your questions and comments. Yes. So we're going to just clean up just a little bit here. Um, how much time? We've got 13 minutes on the spaghetti squash. And so we have a little update for you on our baby calf. <clears throat> um, so Cookie, our milk cow she's a guernsey dairy cow and she had a calf on father's day so just a little bit more than a month ago <clears throat> and um, the calving went beautifully and cookie uh, her baby uh, we named her ginger snap and she is just so sweet she's gorgeous and um, we just love her she's a sweet healthy calf uh, it's been really fun to watch Cookie become a mama. Uh, she's been a really sweet mama looking after her baby. And um, Cookie loves to stand in the pond. And then Ginger Snap lays over to the side all day uh, because it's so hot. So there she is, Ginger Snap. And you can see she's getting a little bit chubby. The red on top of her head is where we dehorned her and had to spray some ant antibiotic um, antiseptic spray on her. That is her it's favorite spot, right there under her chin. <laughs> she puts her head up and she loves yes, it. She just loves to be petted. Um, so she's eating well and just chunking right up. She's been a super fun little girl. Little calf. And she loves her mama. Uh, we're enjoying milking every day. That's um, a new thing for us. Uh, I, my mom had a milk cow, but I never milked her out. So I was a little bit nervous about how that was going to go. But um, the kids are, the teenagers are helping milk. And right now she's given us about two and a half to three gallons a day, which is pretty awesome. So we're also learning how to make cheese. And we showed you last week how we make yogurt. And um, so it's been super fun. And Ginger loves to run around and play and wag her tail. She'll run long laps around the property, not all around the property, but in a good circle. And she loves, she just loves playing. Yeah, she's learning how to graze. It's pretty fun. She just does what her mama does. She sticks her face down and she'll uh, eat the grass oh. and try to eat the grass. and. And she'll chew her cud. And, and she so chews cute. her cud. It's so she'll, cute. She'll stick out her tongue and she'll start chewing. It's so cute. Yes. It's very fun. Kids love to play with her. And she's right now, because we're around her a lot, we're trying to keep her nice and tame so that one day she might be a good milk cow. So um, it's just been super fun. And we're really enjoying that sweet calf. So um, right now, we're still cooking our spaghetti squash. We've got a little bit more time on that. And the chili's cooking. 
and I, I forgot to have that on ceiling. So, um, oh, by the way, happy birthday, Molly. <laughs> Thank you, Abigail. Today's my birthday. Yes, it's pretty fun. The kids are so sweet there. I've been seeing little construction paper, craft, crafty things, and uh, they've been really thoughtful. So that's been fun. Oh, for breakfast tomorrow, since we couldn't do lunch, I mean, special breakfast today, we're going to have, uh, I made clotted cream two days ago, and I made, uh, we're going to make scones tomorrow, and, oh, oh yeah, po either poached eggs or omelets, whichever fits in better, and it's just going to be an awesome tea party. <laughs> Yeah, probably, we like to we'll have birthday have tea. tea parties, and with um, nine family members, that's a lot of fun breakfast throughout yeah. the year. September is a super heavy month. For oh yeah, that, so it's pretty fun. I share a birthday. That's and right. A week yes, before Abigail that, Abigail and Miriam share a birthday, and then Elijah's a week before them. So, so. super fun having lots of birthdays around here. Um, okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about spaghetti squash. One of the great things about it is it's a low-carb vegetable. So it is um, great for people who are on a low-carb diet or have um, blood sugar issues and want to keep your blood sugar more balanced. It also is gluten-free, so it's a great substitute for spaghetti if you're a gluten-free person or if you're just trying to cut down on the gluten in your life or the carbs. Um, so, uh, spaghetti squash is also really neutral in flavor, so you can put it with anything. So, um, in a little bit, we're going to show you how we put it with our, um, chili, but you can also make spaghetti sauce with that. And we have a recipe on our website for our spaghetti squashta. It's a keto recipe that we did for our, um, Fearless Newbie Instant Pot course for keto, the keto version, and uh, you can find that on our website also if you're interested. Uh, so spaghetti squash that you just make, like I said before, um, you just end up making spaghetti sauce and then you mix that in with your spaghetti squash and um, you can cook that in your Instant Pot and blend those flavors, or you can also bake it in the oven, or you can just serve it on top of spaghetti mm. squash. Yeah. Just like traditional pasta and sauce. Another thing we love to do with it is just have it plain as a side dish. So we add plenty of butter and salt and pepper, and then Parmesan cheese. So we'll show you how we do that in a little bit. Um, a friend sent me a recipe this week where she made, um, she browned ground beef kind of like you saw before, and then she sauteed zucchini in that and other vegetables that she had in her fridge. She said she used the vegetables that were kind of close to going bad, so she chopped up uh, broccoli, threw in some spinach leaves, and then mixed that all together with spaghetti sauce. Um, and then stirred that in with her spaghetti squash and put it in a casserole dish, topped it with cheese and baked it. Mm. So yummy. That sounds good. So yummy. And uh, you can also do just a spaghetti squash au gratin. So you would take your spaghetti squash that we're going to show you in a minute and um, add sour cream, cheddar cheese, any kind of au gratin um, ingredients, whatever your potato recipe would be. Instead, use spaghetti squash, mix the sour cream, the cheese, don't forget the salt and pepper, of course, and then bake that into a yummy comfort food side dish that's low carb. So that's pretty awesome. Very delicious. So um, we would also love for you to comment and you can tell us what you would like to see us make. If you um, are curious about how to make something in the Instant Pot. We would love to just have your input on that. And um, so feel free to comment. We would love to also answer questions if you have questions. I'm gonna check the five minutes still left on the spaghetti squash. So uh, I told you I made clotted cream a few days ago. And so how you do it, it's a long process. So what you have to do is you have to, uh, it's one ingredient, you just put First cream. First of all, what is clotted cream? 
it's baked cream, pretty much. Okay. So um, my husband brought home some from London, and it's kind of like butter, only it's not churned. Closer to cream, and it's yeah. not churned. You really can't find it in the U.S. very much at all. And partly and she because loved it. that's why it was made it for him. It was so amazing. Oh, he didn't. Never mind. <laughs> um, it uh, is just really creamy and delicious, and you put it on scones and yum. Yeah. But you can't make it with cream that has been pasteurized. ultra pasteurized. Yeah. You can only do it with low temperature pasteurized cream, or in our case, we used raw cream. Yeah. Okay. So continue so with anyway, your you. Uh, process. It's just I used a recipe. Yep. Uh, so you just, uh, there's a square pan baking, glass baking, baking dish, dish and you pour the cream in that and you stick it in your oven at 180 uh, and then you bake it for 12 hours. 12 hours. 12 hours. Long, long time. And then you let it sit out until, like you pull it out and let it sit for, t until it's room temperature and then you put it in the fridge and I haven't done this step yet, I need to do it. But you, then you lift up a corner of your um, clotted cream and you pour the cream, like it's kind of like buttermilk down, like it's separated from the actual clotted cream. And you pour that into a jar and it's great for baking and any like a substitution for milk or just drinking. And then you put it into a... Um, so you're telling me that the the kind of milky part separates out yes. and the cream part, Goes butter part up, rises and then to it the top. turns to clotted cream. Yes. Wow. So you have to be very careful taking it out of the oven, putting it on the counter, it putting it in the really fridge. Easy. Yeah. Um, and so then you put it in like, um, so he said a ceramic dish or um, just a, we have a butter, butter dish and you could do like a, a yeah, a butter. A butter dish. It's a butter dish, a or, butter a, dish or, a or a little pot. A, yeah, a pot. For butter. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I can't wait. We're all looking forward to trying that tomorrow. So our spaghetti squash is almost done. So close. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, we could go ahead and chop up. So uh, we're going to put some green onions on top of our uh, chili over spaghetti squash. And so I'll show you how we chop up our green onions. I'm just going to cut off the bottoms, cut off that a little bit of the white, and this can go in our trash bowl to flavor our broth later. And I'm, I, I always tell the kids these green, the white part of the green onion is great to eat, but you want to make sure you chop it nice and thin because you're eating it raw. And so uh, a big chunk of raw onion is not my favorite. So I'm just trying to cut this nice and thin so that we don't get big old chunks and bites of raw onion. You're doing a great job. Thank you, girl. I'm bad at cutting things thin. <laughs> I gotta work on it. It does, it takes patience to cut things real thin. You kind of have to slow down and it really, really helps to have a good sharp knife. Yes. Um, sometimes when you get in a hurry and you end up with um, oh. some kind of big chunks and it just takes a little bit more diligence I tell the kids it just takes a little bit more diligence and patience um, to uh, go ahead and cut it nice and finely so our instant pot with the chili is giving us the burn notice and so do what do you panic? do in this case <laughs> no you do not panic don't panic uh, that means it's trying to come up I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. Let me finish chopping up this onion. Yes. It's going to be okay. Uh, but what that means is as the Instant Pot was heating up and it's trying to bring it up to pressure, it just scorched a little bit of that chili on the bottom. So do you know how it tells how it's burned uh, on the because bottom? Because it has a thermometer a temperature sensor on the bottom, and so it tells if there's a hot spot. So I'm just okay. going to open it up. And you can see there's plenty of liquid in here and it's boiling. And so I'm just gonna scrape the bottom and actually I could use um, a little hot pad. I think this is working. Okay, so I feel right here 
a um, kind of brown spot where it's sticking. Here, thank you, ma'am. Uh, this is a cool thing about the Evo is that your Instant Pot no longer turns around and around. <laughs> and that's the spaghetti, uh, the one that the spaghetti squash is in. But in the older models, um, you have to hold your pot still. Um, okay, so I think I've gotten it all scraped off the bottom here. And so hopefully it will have no problem coming to pressure oh, yep. in just a minute. In any case, my chili is still cooking. So it's not like it's going to not be done at all. Okay, I'm going to make sure this is on sealing and hopefully we'll get this to come up to pressure. Meanwhile, our green onions are done. And could I get a little bowl to put the green onions in? I've got my helpful assistants. Um, Abraham, my teenage son, is on camera. Rachel's listening to the sound and my husband is just overseeing everything making sure it's all working properly okay so here we've got our wonderful green onions to put on top in a minute and Miriam is grabbing stuff for us yes and Miriam is helping grab bowls and um, maybe tasting spoons here in a minute she can grab some tasting spoons okay so we're gonna open up our spaghetti squash and right now it's under pressure, so I'm not going to move it, but I'm going to go ahead and release the pressure. Um, another really cool thing about the 8-quart um, Evo Instant Pot is uh, it releases pressure pretty quick, and it also comes up to pressure pretty quick. So this, um, because we have uh, not a lot of food in there, the, there's a lot more steam in there. Yes. Yum. That's going to be great. Okay, and I've got, so remember, we still have the peel of the spaghetti squash and the seeds. So um, if you could dump that or get me in maybe another. Oh, we'll use this one. Oh, yes. Okay. We'll have Excellent. some onion in it. We'll have just a little onion, onion in there. Onion infused it. spaghetti onion squash. Onion infused spaghetti squash. And Miriam, uh, Miriam is our major chicken girl. Could you get me a bowl and we'll put the seeds and stuff in for the chickens? Uh, it's been really fun to find all the things that the chickens like to eat. So our pressure dropped. And now I'm gonna bring this Instant Pot a little closer carefully. Do we need tongs? I have tongs okay, right have here tongs. in our little bowl. And then I have a spoon to spoon out the seeds of this spaghetti squash. And the squash. actual food. And the actual flesh, yes. Okay. Okay, so... I'm going to just lay this lid aside. Okay, so... Um, this is not under pressure, so I'm going to go ahead and move it out of the way. Never move an instant pot under pressure. That's right. Just forward. So yes. if you can see, this squash has already popped open. Yep. So that'll make it a little harder to get out, but a little easier to, to clean it up. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so thankfully I have this set of tongs and my spoon. And we're just gonna reach in here and pull this thing out. It is hot, and you can do this ahead of time so that you're not dealing with such a hot mass. And then here is the other one. What do you mean by you can do this ahead of time? Well, you can um, do it even if you had like earlier in the day. It's not going to hurt it to cool off oh, a little right. bit. Yes. And then it won't be so hot to handle while you're uh, trying to process it. So now you can see that the um, the shell is already broken, and it's going to be really easy to cut into. So. Uh, you can cut it two ways. You can cut it vertically or you can cut it horizontally. If you cut it horizontally, you're going to have longer strands of spaghetti squash. And now I'm going to take... Do you know why that is? Uh, because the strands actually go around this way. Right. So if you cut them this way, then you're cutting them in half. But if you leave them uh, and cut them horizontally, then they're going to... Um, just be longer because they're going around. Okay. And so this spoon 
is just, uh, I love this spoon because it has a little bit of a sharper edge. Here's the chicken bowl. The chickens are gonna love those seeds. When we give them rotten cantaloupe from the garden, <laughs> they go for the uh, seeds. That's just is that what, what they, they love for. the best? They love that. They also love the fruit. They will eat it all the way down to the very last bit of peel. Yes. They just leave that hard edge on it, right? Yes. Just a very peel. And this is coming up. Great. Okay, pressure. so I've got almost all the inside of this, and then we're going to take the flesh, and we're just going to scoop it out and right into our bowl. And you can see those um, noodles coming right off here. And that looks good. It does look good. Uh, this one is a little bit firm. I'm interested to see about the other one. So we did two just the other day, also in the Instant Pot, same amount of time, and they were done perfectly. These ones seem, this one seems to not be quite done. Um, so you can go ahead and scoop this out and let it go another round. Um, but it's kind of crisp, tender, so it's going to be great like to al eat. Al dente. It's kind of like al dente <laughs> instead of being mushy because sometimes it'll go over a little bit and I think it depends on the size of your squash and I've got one little chunk see of the um, shell that I don't want in my food what was that oh, the food burn so it our chili beeped again saying food pressure. burn but it is up to pressure yes, so we're okay. not going to open it yeah we're just going to let it be and it's gonna be fine. And meanwhile, it is cooking. Okay, so the chickens actually don't like this peel. This is what they usually eat it up to. So we're gonna put this well, one. Yeah, I mean, there is some the other. stuff yeah, that there's they a little. probably clean off. No but. big deal. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and clean this one out again. And I, I don't know if you can see, but this is so much easier to do once it's cooked than when it's raw. Um, and so it's just a little extra step of getting that out of there, but it is wonderful to have the fresh ingredient of the spaghetti squash um, in your food. And it tastes so good. Okay, and we're just gonna pull this out. Do you wanna go ahead and... I'm gonna, can I? Nah, it's too hot. Yeah, that's what I thought. Too hot. Okay, so uh, make sure that you go ahead and put salt and pepper on the spaghetti squash. Even if you're gonna serve chili or something over it, you still want this, the layer of the noodles, the spaghetti squash noodles, to be seasoned. Do you want me to do that? Uh, you sure could. Oh, sorry. Oh, and butter. Do you wanna get the Ooh, butter out? Yes. Abigail's going to get a little butter. And of course, you don't have to put butter on it if you're going to top it with chili or spaghetti squash. But if you're going to eat it plain, I would highly encourage just a little bit of butter. And it just gives it a creamy, delicious taste to go with this your... do you want in there? Uh, about half of it, probably. Okay. Just a couple, couple tablespoons of butter. I'm just gonna cut this up a little smaller so it melts quicker. Yes. Probably won't have any trouble melting anyway though. It's already pretty hot. Okay, so another way to increase the cooking time just a little would be um, if I had on a normal day, if I will put, a lot of times I'll put something in a, with a little extra time like in the afternoon when I have some more time and not at crunch dinner time. If, if I just let it naturally release in there, uh, that probably would have finished it cooking and it wouldn't be quite so, um, it's not super firm, but it would be just a tiny bit more done. Okay, there you go. Got almost all that flesh out of here and we're just gonna show you this one and then we'll go ahead and top it with some of that yummy Texas chili. Yummy. 
So there you go. That's how you prepare spaghetti squash in the Instant Pot without having to chop it up or even chop it open. Well, yeah. we did chop it open. Just we did chop it open. Cooked while Just it was cooked. not while well, it was hard yeah. as a rock. I've actually done that before. I think I almost cut off my finger. I know. It's just because that big spaghetti squash, it's hard to get any knife, even a great knife, it's hard to get any knife in there and um, maybe a big old meat mallet would do it, but meat that mallet? just feels dangerous. I don't have one. Like a meat knife, you mean? Like, like the big huge giant meat knife that almost has school. like wow. the... Um, the like the board scraper, but yeah, the, that's it's almost it's got the a shape. handle, and then it's yeah, that might do the job, but maybe we're not we gonna worry about that. And we could just go right, <sighs> hiya. Chop. That reminded me of this piggy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, so here is a plate, and we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna wipe this off a little. The spaghetti squash got a little messy. Sorry. And this one is still piping hot. I'm just gonna get it out of the way. Oh, but that looks so good. And I love that spaghetti squash has such a different texture than other squash. Some people don't like the mushy texture of like um, butternut squash or pumpkin, but spaghetti squash just has such a nice noodley texture. It is so fantastic. Yes. And it can, uh, like I said, it can take so many different flavors on top. You can just go any direction you want with this wonderful veggie. Okay, so go ahead and put some of that on a plate. Okay. How much do you want? That, that looks pretty good. Pile it up. And uh, so this one will be our little side dish one. And we're going to top this with some Parmesan cheese. Okay, and then we're releasing the pressure on the chili, and so then you can go ahead and put some more spaghetti squash on this one, and we're going to top oh, okay. this one yes. with chili. We're releasing the pressure on the Texas chili. Will this little bit break up a little bit more? It's trying. Not the best. Chili. Okay, that's okay. No problem. Yum. <laughs> Okay, you want and more butter got, on this one because it's all yeah, right. we're good. Got my ladle ready for the chili. Another thing you can do with this, um, so the au gratin option, at this point, what you would do is mix in some sour cream and some cheese. I would actually mix it right in with this and um, right in with the other spaghetti squash that's just plain and uh, then bake it in a baking dish. Don't mm. forget to top it with some more cheese. Yeah. Just bake it in a baking dish until it's uh, nice and browned on top. That would be so delicious. Yeah. So um, another thing you can do with the Texas chili would be to, to put the spaghetti squash like this in a baking dish by itself and then top it with the chili and then put, top cooked. that with, with cooked chili yep. okay. and then uh, sprinkle cheese over that and then that would be something you could put in the oven and bake right right away or you can make it ahead of time and bake it when you're ready so if you yep. have a weekend and you want a meal prep you could make that over the weekend have it covered and in your fridge and just put it in the oven and heat it up on a Tuesday night yummy Yes. Except ta Tuesday is Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Well, Texas chili, that's yeah. kind of taco-ish. Yeah. Just oh, have okay. it with chips. Yeah. There you go. So we're waiting on the chili back here to come down from being in, under pressure. Um, sometimes when you have a really full pot, it takes a little while for the pressure to come down. Yep. So, but it smells really fabulous. Honestly, I wish we had smell of vision sense to me. What? The, how it, if it has more food, it takes, it has more pressure. Seems like it would have less pressure because there's less area in the top. Right? You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. I don't know. 
that's a <laughs> physics question. Maybe we'll work on that in our uh, physics studies during yes. homeschooling. <laughs> homeschooling. So homeschooling is a whole different, or actually everyone's school, we understand, is just a whole different ball game this fall. Um, so we're praying for our friends as everyone makes decisions and uh, gets settled into the new routine Normal. for this year. The, yes. Just heard that pin drop. Uh, a great thing to teach your kids if you have them home would be to teach them how to cook. It is a life benefit that they can um, take with them for their whole life that will serve them well. Okay, so we're going to stir this up. And that is just smelling and looking fantastic. Oh my goodness, yum yum. And we're just going to top this with chili. Go ahead and top it with the chili. Then and go ahead and yeah. Like put, let's cheese. do a little cheese and then a good dollop of that. Uh, you can also serve this in a bowl. Sorry. If you prefer. That's too much. Let's stir yeah, this just a little more. Okay. That looks so good. This is actually we're using it as sour cream, but it's actually Greek yogurt that we made on here last week. Throw some green onions. Yes, please. Sprinkle some of those green onions on. How's that? Oh, maybe a little bit more. Oh, that looks fantastic. Uh, we're working on a full curriculum for both kids and adults, so let us know if you're interested in that um, because we just want to equip people to uh, cook together with their family and to, uh, teach the, their children how to cook. And also, if you never learned how to cook, uh, to learn yourself. So it's awesome to learn along with your kids. I learned so much as a homeschool mom, and I would just encourage you to get right in there and learn if you don't already know or find some, uh, someone else to teach. So. Remember, your family can cook and enjoy great meals together like this one. Oh yeah, we're gonna taste it. Yes. Chili first or this one first? Uh, let's do the plain yeah. first. I was gonna say that. Okay, so this just has butter, salt, and pepper and topped with a little Parmesan. And we cooked it in the Instant Pot without having to chop it up. I'm trying to get a, a reasonable bite here. <laughs> and not a huge one, it's kind of acting like regular spaghetti. It's so good. Needs a little bit of salt, but I love that texture of those mm, noodles. Yeah. So yummy. I love and that. Now here's the chili. I'm excited about spaghetti this. Spaghetti squash with Texas chili. A great hearty dish that is. You can get a good bite. I know. I'm having a hard time getting a good bite. Okay. Ow. Oh. Mm. That is good. Very yummy. We've decimated the plate, Abigail. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it. It tastes anyway. great. So, thanks so much for watching today. We would love for you to go visit our website, find all these recipes and more uh, at thecookingfamily.com. Also, on there, while you're there, you can sign up for our mailing list and receive the free instant pot uh, fearless newbie instant pot course that's a mini course and it's free and you can sign up on our website for that and also like us on facebook follow us on instagram um we're there and we cook all kinds of things not just instant pot and um, we would love for you to just join in the fun, follow us. Um, we've been putting stories on there of our pickle making and our cheese making and all kinds of fun things. And we want you to remember that your family can cook and enjoy great meals together. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>